friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another weekly WW meal prep. I have some fantastic recipes to share with you. You are going to see what I am planning for this upcoming week for breakfast, lunch. We're also going to make a fun little treat and I'm going to show you what I am planning for snacks. So if you're looking for some fantastic WW meal ideas, of course I will link all of the recipes down in the description box below. Then you have come to the right place and all you have to do is stay tuned. For my breakfast this week, we are going to prep baked oatmeal. I am really excited for this recipe. It sounds so good. I'm going to pair this with a couple of hard boiled eggs. So let me show you what is in our baked oatmeal. So first you're going to need some old fashioned oats, not the quick cook, but the regular oatmeal, any milk or milk alternative of your choice, strawberries, you could do fresh or frozen, blueberries, fresh or frozen, some sort of brown sugar alternative, light butter, cinnamon, baking powder, salt, a ripe banana, vanilla extract, eggs, and certainly not least, Lily's chocolate chips. So let's put together this baked oatmeal. So the first thing that we need to do for our baked oatmeal is go ahead and grab yourself a large bowl. To that bowl, we are going to add two cups of oats. We are also going to add one teaspoon of cinnamon, baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. So I just put everything into one little bowl there. We're also going to add one third of a cup of brown sugar or brown sugar alternative, whatever you're using. We're also going to add half of our chocolate chips. So excuse my washer in the background. So what I have here is I literally counted out 300 and six Lily's chocolate chips. So I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop in and add just about half of my chocolate chips. And then I have my berries as well. I'm going to add about half of those to the mix as well. And then we're just going to give this a quick stir and we're gonna let this set aside while we add our wet ingredients. And then we'll be ready to assemble our baked oatmeal. So this is actually a really quick and easy recipe. Next, we're going to combine our wet ingredients. So what I have here is two tablespoons of light butter. To that, I'm going to add two cups of almond milk. I'm also going to add one cracked egg. And lastly, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then we're just gonna whisk this together until everything is nice and combined, and then we're ready to get our oatmeal into our baking dish. Now we're ready to put our baked oatmeal together. So first, you're going to take your oat, cinnamon, berry mixture, and you're going to place it into the bottom of your baking dish. Now the recipe calls for a nine by nine baking dish. I don't have that size, or no, I'm sorry, not nine by nine, 10 by 10. And I don't have that size, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do a 13 by nine. Uh, mine's just not gonna probably be as thick when it's all said and done because it is in a bigger pan, but I'm actually okay with that um, because it's still gonna be delicious. And I'll just get a bigger size serving for my eyes with a larger pan. So we're gonna go ahead and lay all of our casserole ingredients into the bottom of our baking dish. To that, we're gonna go ahead and add in the mixture of the almond milk, the egg, the butter, and the vanilla, and we're just gonna pour that over the top. We do want all of our oats to be covered in liquid. That's what's actually going to cook them and make them nice and soft. So we're gonna go ahead and add that, and then I would recommend just taking a spoon and just making sure that all of your oatmeal does is soaked in that almond milk and butter mixture. This smells so delicious, you guys. Look at how yummy that looks. Just kind of an FYI, I will be counting this as one fruit because there is quite a bit of fruit in my baked oatmeal, so this will count as one of my fruits for the day. And if you follow my channel, you know that I eat two fruits per day. So this is going to be one of those fruits. And then to the top of this, we're gonna add the remainder of our fruit. So go ahead and just kind of disperse it out over the top of the oats. And then that way you've got some delicious fruit in every single bite of your oatmeal. Again, 
Yum, this looks so good. All right, so go ahead and throw on your fruit. Just make sure that it's evenly on there where again, you've got some fruit in every bite. And then we're also going to add the rest, uh, the other half of our chocolate chips. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of sprinkle those over the top of our baked oatmeal. And then last but not least, we are going to add our banana. Now I went ahead and chopped up two bananas only because my bananas were really small and I just wanted to make sure that I also had a little bit of banana in every bite of my oatmeal. So I'm just going to lay these out on the top and then we are going to put this in our oven at 375 degrees. Once it's almost cooked through, we're gonna pull it out. We're gonna sprinkle just a little bit of additional brown sugar on top so that it caramel and gives it that little bit of extra sweetness. Pop this back into the oven and then I will be back when we go to add on our brown sugar. But this looks absolutely phenomenal. So I pulled the baked oatmeal out. You guys, my kitchen smells so good. And I went ahead and I added about two tablespoons of the Swerve brown sugar blend just kind of over the top of my baked oatmeal. I'm gonna throw this back into the oven for about 10 minutes until that brown sugar caramelizes and then I'll be back to show you my completed breakfast. But I am super excited about this. And here is our finished baked oatmeal. This looks delicious. Look at that brown sugar caramelized, those bananas, yum. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this divided into eight equal servings. I'm gonna put it in my meal prep container with my eggs and then I'll be back to show you exactly what I'm having for breakfast. Also for breakfast, I did go ahead and hard boil some eggs in my Instant Pot, put them in an ice bath. They've been sitting in the ice bath for quite a while, so the ice has all melted. I'm gonna go ahead and get these peeled. I do pre-peel my eggs. I don't have a problem with them lasting for the week by doing that, so I'm gonna pre-peel these and put two eggs in each meal prep container for breakfast. So here is my completed breakfast for the week. Look at how Yummy this looks. So, of course, I am having two hard-boiled eggs for zero points. I don't always eat both yolks, just kind of depends. Usually we'll sprinkle some everything but the bagel seasoning on those. And then look at this. This is my baked oatmeal. This is so good. I tried a little bite. Chocolatey, fruity. Oh my gosh, you guys, it is to die for. This is a must-make recipe. This entire serving, which is one-eighth, of my baked oatmeal is only four smart points. That's it for all of this food. Chocolatey oatmeal goodness, four points. So my entire breakfast is only four smart points. And again, I will be counting this as one of my fruits for the day. Oh my gosh, you guys, look it. I'm so excited. Is I'm gonna get some tea out in the sun in my sun tea pitcher. I'm gonna be showing you a delicious, refreshing, fantastic zero point summer drink. I got this from My Journey to Healthy over at Jess's YouTube channel. So what I have here in my sun tea pitcher is I have seven bags of the Tazo Passion Tea. So I'm gonna pop this outside in the sun. I'm gonna let this really soak up the rays, get nice and concentrated, and then I will be back to show you exactly how to make this delicious copycat Starbucks tea recipe. So I just pulled my passion tea in from outside. It smells delicious. So how you make the copycat Starbucks passion fruit lemonade is so easy. Go ahead and brew yourself your passion tea. So that's what it looks like. And I'm telling you, it smells sweet and berry and delicious. So I pulled that in and then you're going to take the full pitcher size packages of crystal light lemonade. You're going to add that to your passion tea and you're going to give it a big stir. And then my friends, you have passion fruit lemonade copycat Starbucks recipe for zero smart points. For my lunches this week, I am stoked to make this. This is the Outback Steakhouse copycat Alice Springs quesadilla. Just so you guys know, this quesadilla at Outback is over 1100 calories and we are going to make a copycat version that is ww friendly and nowhere near those calories so let me show you what is in our quesadilla and then what else i'm going to have for lunch so first you're going to need some light mayo mustard garlic salt and parsley you can use fresh or dried mushrooms light butter chicken breast 
two types of cheeses. I'm going to do a light Mexican blend and the Trader Joe's light shredded mozzarella. You can also use fat-free cheese if you would like. You'll need some tortillas, so I'm going to do the Olay Extreme Wellness Wraps. And lastly, you're going to need some center cut bacon. Now, with my quesadilla, I am going to pair that with some fat-free refried beans and a veggie. So let's get started putting these quesadillas together. I forgot to show you that we're going to be using honey as well, so I apologize for that. I'm going to be using the sugar-free honey. I bought this on nettrition.com. There is a link down in the description box that will take you directly to Nettrition. So we're going to be using some of this in the sauce as well. So the first thing we need to do is get our bacon cooked. So I went ahead and lined a baking sheet with some foil. I'm going to throw this in the oven at 375 until my bacon is cooked nice and crispy. And then we'll move on to preparing our chicken and our mushrooms. Next, we need to go ahead and cut up our mushrooms. So I'm going to slice up about half of the package of these baby Bellas. I'm also going to slice my chicken breasts into strips so that we can cook those down in a pan and also saute up our mushrooms. our sauce for our quesadillas. So what I have here is light mayo. I have one tablespoon per quesadilla for a table or total of five tablespoons of mayo. So we're going to add that to a bowl. And then what I have here is mustard, one teaspoon per quesadilla. So five teaspoons total. And lastly, I have my sugar-free honey. And again, in this, I have three and a half teaspoons total. We want a little less than a teaspoon per quesadilla. So again, I am making five. So I just wanted to make sure that I got enough, an equal amount of everything where I could easily calculate the point. So we're just gonna give our sauce here a nice good stir, get everything nice and combined. And then we're gonna go ahead and set this aside. Next, we're gonna go ahead and season our sliced up chicken with just some salt and pepper. And then you can either grill this on a barbecue or you can put this into a pan and go ahead and sear it in a pan. So that's what I'm going to do. So add in your salt and pepper, give it a quick stir, and then we're gonna get this on the stove. For our chicken, you're gonna go ahead and spray a pan with some nonstick cooking spray. I have my seasoned chicken breast here. We're just going to add this to the pan and we are going to let it fully cook. So you wanna make sure your chicken is fully cooked into an additional saucepan go ahead and add two teaspoons of light butter to that we are going to add our chopped up mushrooms we are also going to season our mushrooms for sauteing with some parsley so you can use fresh parsley or dried parsley whatever you have on hand and then we're also going to give it a little bit of seasoning of some garlic salt. You could use garlic powder and regular salt if you do not have garlic salt. So give that a good dose of parsley and garlic salt and we're going to saute down our mushrooms. So our chicken is looking good. It's probably got about another five minutes or so and then look at our mushrooms. Yum. These two have about another two minutes or so. We're just going to be transferring them into a separate bowl. You can see I had just pulled my bacon out. So everything is just about done cooking and then we will assemble our quesadillas. So to get started assembling our quesadillas, we're going to take one of our tortillas, set your other tortilla aside. To that, you're going to add one eighth cup of light shredded cheese and one ounce of the Trader Joe's light shredded mozzarella. And you wanna go ahead and get that as evenly spread out on your tortilla as you can. Don't go too terribly close to the edge though because you don't want all that cheesy goodness seeping out of the edges. Then we are going to add two slices center cut bacon that I went ahead and crumbled up. So we're just gonna sprinkle that here over the cheese. 
as even as we can. So we get a little bit of bacon in every bite. And then we're gonna go ahead and add on our pieces of chicken. And you just wanna divide your chicken out amongst all five days, so of five different quesadillas. So just do one fifth of your chicken on each quesadilla. Chicken is zero points, so you don't have to be as exact as you would with, say, the bacon or the cheese. So go ahead and add on your slices of chicken. And then you're going to add one fifth of your sauteed mushrooms. And by the way, these smell so good. I love sauteed mushrooms. So go ahead and add about one fifth of those to your quesadilla. And then you're going to take your other tortilla, lay it on top, kind of give it a nice push down, and we're gonna transfer this to cook down in a pan. I've sprayed my pan with some nonstick cooking spray. I've really been liking this avocado oil spray from Chosen Foods. No added chemicals, so good. So I went ahead and sprayed the bottom of my pan, and then I'm also going to spray the top tortilla as well. We're gonna let this cook down until golden brown, flip it, and cook it on the other side until golden brown. So here is one of our completed quesadillas. Look at this, you guys. Look at how yummy that looks in there with the bacon, the chicken, the cheese. So basically you're going to take a pizza cutter, go ahead and cut your quesadilla into four equal sections, and then this is what will go into the meal prep. So let me finish cooking down the rest of my quesadillas and we'll put together our lunches for the week. So here is my completed lunches for the week. I'm gonna walk you through everything that I'm going to be having. So first, let's start with lunch. So what I have here is one of my copycat Outback Steak Alice Springs quesadilla, and I have one serving of the honey mustard sauce that we made in the beginning. This entire quesadilla, including the sauce, is six smart points. Not bad for chicken, bacon, sauce, and cheese quesadilla. I'm going to be having a small serving of this. This is the Pomodoro Riced Cauliflower. This has tomatoes, garlic, white wine, and chili powder. I am counting it as zero points. So I have a little bit of that. And then I have just about a quarter of a cup of the fat-free refried beans, which is also zero points. So the only thing in my lunch here that is points is my quesadilla, and that is six. So quesadilla with sauce refried beans and riced cauliflower and then i'm going to be cutting up some strawberries that will be zero points but will be my second fruit of the day and then for dessert i'm going to be having one of my french twists this is the wild raspberry i love these these are so good these are linked down in my amazon store below they are only one smart point per twist so my entire lunch including the twist is a total of seven smart points this is a lot of food, you guys, for seven smart points. Yum, copycat quesadilla. That, my friends, is a delicious lunch. I'm gonna be making some Skinny Kitchen Ranch to have on hand for this week. We are planning on having quite a few salads throughout the week, so I thought that this would be a nice addition for the smart points. So this is such a fantastic recipe, super easy to make. Literally, all you need is a jar. You don't even need any utensils to shake this sucker up. So here is what is in the Skinny Kitchen Ranch. First, you're going to need two packages of the Buttermilk Ranch. Now, this is a modification that I make to the Skinny Kitchen Ranch. I've seen this on several YouTube channels. I can't even tell you all the people that I've seen this on, but the substitution of the Buttermilk Ranch is in addition to not adding in the regular ranch. So you'll need two packages. You'll need some low-fat buttermilk and some light mayo and a jar or a container to add your ingredients in and give it a big shake. So let's put together some easy peasy, delicious one Smart Point Ranch. So to make our ranch, again, super easy, into a jar or a container, you're gonna add one and three quarters cup of low fat buttermilk. Make sure you get the low fat, not the whole milk buttermilk. To that, you are going to add one half of a cup of light mayo. The recipe recommends Hellman's. I have used both Best Foods and Kraft, and they're both just as good in the recipe. So go ahead and add in your half of a cup of light mayo. 
And then lastly, you're going to add in your two packets of your Hidden Valley Buttermilk Ranch. Both packets in there. And then all we're going to do, this is so incredibly easy, is we are going to put on the lid to our jar and we're gonna give this a shake. A nice big shake until everything is fully nice and incorporated. And then you're going to put this into the refrigerator. It'll get a little bit thicker as it refrigerates. Two tablespoons of the Skinny Kitchen Ranch for only one Smart Point. For a sweet treat this week, we are going to make chocolate peanut butter brownies. You guys are going to die when you hear the smart points of these brownies and wait until you see the size that you get for the smart points. So let me show you what is in our chocolate peanut butter brownies. So first you're going to need some egg whites, some powdered peanut butter. You can use the chocolate peanut butter or the regular peanut butter, whatever you prefer. Unsweetened applesauce, water, vanilla extract, protein powder. I'm going to use the Devotion Brownie Batter. As you know, this is a new find for me and I am literally obsessed. The Devotion Protein Powder is hands down the best that you can buy. No chalky aftertaste, no weird protein texture, no weird protein taste. It is creamy and it is delicious. So I'm going to be using that in my brownies. You can order Devotion down in the description box. There is a link and my discount code that will save you 10% off of your order. If you order a certain amount on their website, it's free shipping as well. But I highly recommend that you pick up the Devotion, the brownie batter, the angel food cake, and their flex flavors are delicious as well. So check out Devotion, you will not be sorry. You're also going to need some sugar-free frosting, and lastly, some baking powder. So let's get started on our brownies. So to make our brownies, you're going to need a large bowl, three quarters of a cup of whatever protein powder you're using. Again, I highly recommend the Devotion. Also, two tablespoons of powdered peanut butter. And we're also going to add one teaspoon of baking powder. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. And then we're gonna give this a quick mix so we get all of our dry ingredients nice and incorporated. And then we're going to add in all of our wet ingredients. Once your mix is nice and combined, your peanut butter powder, your protein powder, your baking powder, we're gonna go ahead and add in our wet ingredients. So what I have here is the equivalent of three large egg whites. You also need one half of a cup of water. And we're going to need two tablespoons of unsweetened applesauce. And then lastly, we're gonna need one teaspoon of either vanilla or almond extract. So I decided to go ahead and do vanilla. And then we're gonna give this a nice solid mix and we'll be ready to put this into our brownie pan and get this in the oven. So super, super easy. You can smell that peanut butter and that chocolate and it smells so good. Once you have your mix nice and combined together, we are going to go ahead and pour it into a greased eight by eight brownie pan. So go ahead and add in your mix. Yum, oh my gosh, this smells so good. As I get a little bit closer to it, I can definitely, definitely smell the peanut butter. Oh my gosh, it smells so yummy. And then we're just gonna kind of spread this evenly into the bottom of our brownie pan. What I like to do is give it a nice tap before putting it into the oven at 350 for 12 or 14 minutes. Chocolate peanut butter brownies are out of the oven. Look at that. Crispy, delicious. They are super soft. I can feel how moist they're gonna be. Really excited. We are going to let these cool for about 10 minutes and then we are gonna frost these. We are going to have chocolate fudge frosted brownies. Our brownies are nice and cooled. What I did is I took four tablespoons of the sugar-free chocolate frosting, weighed it out on my food scale, put it into a bowl, popped it in the microwave for about 20 seconds just to get it kind of melty. And then we are going to put this deliciousness onto our brownies, spread this around. We're gonna add just a little bit of fun with some sprinkles and we are going to have 
frosted brownies. So let me get these nice and frosted up. We'll cut them into serving sizes and I'll be back to give you the smart points, but look at that. Here's our brownies once we've frosted them and added some sprinkles. So I'm going to cut this into six servings. Yes, only six servings. I will plate it up and give you the smart points. Wait until you guys see what you get for the smart points. And here's our brownie cut up into six equal servings. So we have six pieces over here. So this is one sixth of the brownie. Frosted is only two smart points. That's it too and that includes the frosting and that my friends is a huge brownie i would say that it's probably three inches by two and a half inches so it is quite the brownie for only two smart points definite must try recipe i would highly recommend the devotion so you don't have any weird protein powder aftertaste but this looks so good it's going to be my snack later so here's what i'm taking for snacks for the upcoming work week so i did go ahead and get take my little snack pack of carrots. I really like these. They're already divided out into little baggies. I think it honestly makes it easier and saves a Ziploc bag as well. And I think the price is just a ton pennies more than buying a full bag. So I'm gonna bring one of those. And then I'm also going to bring a light shredded mozzarella cheese stick and a beef stick. These are the beef sticks. I actually got these at Costco. They are delicious and they are only one smart point each. So. That's the size of the beef stick. So I'll put it here next to the cheese stick. You can see pretty darn close in size of a mozzarella cheese stick. So one point, one point. So it's a two point high protein snack. And then I'm also going to be bringing one of my new favorite, Too Good Danny Light and Fit Yogurts. Two grams of sugar, all natural sugar, nothing added. Three carbs for an entire yogurt and so good. And I'm going to top it with my all time favorite, Julian Bakery Pro Granola. This is the espresso cluster. This is by far my favorite, favorite flavor. These are the stats on this granola. You can actually have an entire half of a cup for two points. What other granola can you have that's only two smart points for a half cup? I eat this plain. I eat this with almond milk, but my very favorite way to eat this is to take about a tablespoon of it for zero points and top a yogurt. So you get that nice crunch factor and this espresso cluster flavor is so good. This yogurt is paleo and keto friendly, low net carb, high protein, gluten free, grain free, nothing artificial, no soy, non GMO, no preservatives. And this particular one has prebiotics and probiotics. You can buy this granola on julianbakery.com. There is a link down in the description box below that you click on the link and you enter the code and you will save 10% and get free shipping definitely pick yourself up some granola you guys is so good and they have so many flavors they have chocolate peanut butter vanilla vanilla cinnamon and then of course the espresso cluster which this to me tastes like a caramel macchiato it has that little hint of caramel and coffee and it is delicious so that is going to be a two smart point snack zero and two so those are my snacks for the week, definitely grab yourself some pro granola. Thank you for joining me on another weekly WW meal prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of my meals planned for this next week. The recipes, you guys, are so good, so delicious. If you have not ordered Devotion Nutrition Protein Powder, I highly recommend it. It is hands down the best protein powder on the market. There is zero aftertaste, zero icky protein taste, hands down the best. Down in the description box below, there is a link and discount code for you. So take advantage of it. Order the Devotion Nutrition. You are going to be seeing that a lot in my upcoming videos because I am literally obsessed with it. If you're new to my channel, make sure that you subscribe. Hit that little notification bell. That way you're notified every time that I upload a new video. I would be appreciative if you give this one a thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know, are you gonna try these recipes that I shared with you for this week? I love you guys. See you all in my next video. Bye.